Well, no, it's a character-based book. It's a little bit, little element of Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil, where it's a, it's a bunch of characters in their lives. It's and what happens to them over the years in Palm Beach? What 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 their wealth does to them? And there's there are a lot of there's there are tragedies. There's a murder. There's you know serious illness. There are people that very positive things. There's a range of people. But it's a fascinating subject. Yeah. It's like it's like people people say it to me. I mean, how, why would you live in Palm Beach? I mean, please, it's one of the most fascinating. There's so many interesting characters. I mean, this book is just a dream to do. I mean, they, these it, it, so many stories. I mean, and, and would, how was I going to do it? Would I? I had to live here. I had to make people be friendly with people. I, and I have great friends. I have a great life here. But I've, all the time I've been watching and, and thinking and recording and, and, and figuring what I think about this place. You know, when Ron Kessler did his book, he came and was just here a few months. And, you know, most of the stuff he sat in Taboo and interviewed people on the bar stool. But to really get inside you can always get that level. You can go. You can get the people that are. It's like when you go when the anthropologist goes to Borneo, and uh, he's in this remote village, and he comes to and, and uh, edge of the village, the town drunk comes out and says hello to him. It's going to take many months before the real people in that community want to talk to him. So it, it, it it's hard, and and they're mistrustful, and they don't want to be caricatured, and they feel that the, the, and, and and I don't want to caricature them either. I think it's too easy to do that, and that's. I think, and I think that's what you're up against in this in this thing. That you, you, you want to have an edge, but but there are human lives here, and somehow you've got to get through to the, to that, and not just show the, the just show the veneer. It's, it's it's a hard thing to do. It's a hard thing for me. I'm having a hard time doing it. It's the way it is. Well, for what I do, I have to spend a lot of time with people. I have to go back time and time again and just, I mean, one of the people in my book is a guy called Fred Keller who murdered his wife who died a few months ago. I mean, I interviewed him for 30 hours in his, in his, you know, and most of that was total waste. So, uh, so the people that are really characters, I go back to them time and time again. To, it's not that they hide anything at the beginning. It's just that after a while they get more comfortable with you. And then you, can see, you, you, see, you, you see more and more what you have to ask and to figure these things out. Yeah. But y as I hear you say that, I think of these friends of mine in the building, okay? And, and I can see them, if you saw them, or, or if I didn't know them before I came here, and I saw them walking their poodle to the, to, to the poodle bath, I would think, what pathetic jokes, I mean. But they're great people. And, and they do terrifically generous things in charity and everything else. And, and, but but it, it's, so easy, it's so easy to stereotype them, that's all I'm saying. And I, and I would have done the same thing. Well, who wouldn't want it? Who who wouldn't want this? It's the beauty of this place. I mean, it, it's just an awesomely beautiful place to live. I mean, uh, but the price one pays is the isolation from so many elements of American society. And I see these kids going to the Palm Beach Day School. None of the, the right next door is a public school. There's not a kid on this island except the kids of maids and and uh, and gardeners who go to that school. And you see these little kids come out in their blue jackets and their little bl blue, you know, skirts, and you wonder what kind of vision of the world will they have? Well, they will go to, they'll go then to a prep school, and they maybe go to the Ivy League, the Ivy League, and they'll come back here, and they'll go to the B&T and the Everglades, and they'll never know the rest of the world, many of them. And what a loss. No, I did. I used to write checks f for the Lord's place. I mean, I when I first came down here, first couple of years, we went to a number of the balls, 
and I found them so tedious. And I had other uses for my money. I, I, I had other, you know, I went to Columbia Journalism School. I try to give the, something of different, different things I want to give my money to. And plus, I don't have limit. I don't have kinds of money that a lot of these people have, right? So I stopped going. And the one place I would go every year to go to the Lord's place because I admired. I knew what they did. And then about three years ago, I decided, gee, maybe why don't I volunteer? And I started volunteering it. And I, it's in, extremely important to me. It's every Friday. And boy, I don't, I get there. I'm on time. I don't, it, it, you know, I don't, it, 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 it's, it's like a job. Like, it's, like a, it's like an important job that my life, <laughs> if I'm going to eat that day, I don't get there. I mean, it really matters to me. And I just and like the variety of people there. There's the guy, that, Tony, that uh, does drinks. He's 90 years old. He comes up and does, does that. There's a variety of, there, there's, there, there's these women, that, there's such, such different walks of life, the people that volunteer. And, and, and I find that interesting. You know, and, and I sometimes will serve meals and sometimes, sometimes I'll be a table sitter and talk to people. And just as an author where I just love the exp human experience of people, the, the, the stories I've heard from people, it's just, I mean, my gosh, it's just overwhelming. 